Oh man, this is some bad news for Palantir investors because the UK government has just terminated one of its key data sharing contracts with Palantir. Let's take a look at what's happened. Uh, so we know that the company is founded by Peter Thiel. We know he's got a seat on Facebook board. Now, the Department of Health and Social Care issued a tender in August to move its adult, adult social care dashboard from Palantir to a new system called Edge. And Edge is owned by UK's big company, BAE Systems, but it's still a big conglomerate anyway. Now, they also, through the public records, they found out that an IT consultant called Mosaic are going to be paid $100,000 to complete the migration from Palantir to BAE systems. Now, this is particularly interesting. So the UK government has terminated a controversial data sharing agreement with US tech firm Palantir following criticism from privacy campaigners. So in other words, the UK government did not have an issue with the service or software provided by Palantir. OK, this is just uh, just criticism from privacy campaigners who are saying that Palantir do not do enough to protect the data of the individuals using the system. So the Department of Health and Social Care issued a tender in August to move the system. We've discussed that the future UK health security agency architecture is seeking to move away from reliance on third party data analytics platform and software. The tender reads, well, that's weird because... Edge is still built by BAE Systems, which is a third party. So it's not in the government. It's not government built. So it really doesn't do that. So the Department of Health and Social Care wishes to migrate from current Palantir solution to Edge. This system was established and developed by BAE Systems, specifically for DHCS, which is Department of Health and Social Care, and was progressed at pace during the pandemic. Okay, so they're saying, look, the difference here is Palantir have an off-the-shelf system, whereas BAE Systems has built them their platform called Edge, which they own and have control over. That makes more sense. Now, the tender was one. Yes, we know. So the August, the, they agreed the contract in December 20, and they've cancelled it as of August. Sorry, and it started August 18, and it runs until September 30. Okay, that's for the migration work. So by September 30, Palantir will not be uh, getting a renewal. Okay, that's when the contract would have renewed and Palantir will not be getting a renewal. Um, now, news that the contract has with Termini was first reported by Bloomberg. Find, founded by Peter Thiel, venture capitalist. He's on Facebook's board. We know that Palantir provides its data analytics platform to government departments, spy agencies and businesses around the world. Now, it saw a rise for use in coronavirus pandemic. Yes, we saw that. We know the UK used it for various things. They were tracking their vaccine rollouts. They were using, they were looking at their test results and various other data that they were collecting during the pandemic, which none of us know what they were collecting, but they were collecting loads of it. Um, and yeah, exactly. Here it says Britain, for example, used Palantir's technology and expertise to try to understand the large quantities of data that it collected. Correct. And it awarded a two year contract in December that is yet to be terminated. So they're going to terminate that early. Now, here's the crux of it. So Palantir says that patient data is pseudonymized. OK, so what they're saying is they'll take a patient name and they'll use some coding mechanism to give it an alias. OK, so they'll take Mr. John Smith and they'll give John Smith an alias, Robert, and they'll keep all the data attached to the name Robert. But they can trace back if they need to. OK, so the key there is they, they will have the code to be able to say, OK, we can take that data back to John Smith and re reassociate it. Now, the privacy campaigners are saying that's not going far enough. You need to fully decrypt it. So you as Palantir and whoever you share your data sources with cannot get back to John Smith with his medical data or private data. And that's what the privacy campaigners are complaining about. So a campaign was launched in June to try stop Palantir from working with the UK's National Health Service. That's our NHS, the National Health Service. Um, their background has generally been in contracts where, and this is a damning statement, their background has generally been in contracts where people are harmed, not healed, argued Corey Critter, the lawyer who co-founded Fox Glove. Okay, so they said Palantir have an appalling track record. Uh, it's built its business supporting drone strikes and missile strikes, immigration raids and arrests, not the delivery and care of medicine, Lewis told me. It's got a questionable agenda, and I think that will have a negative impact on patient trust, particularly among minoritized communities who may feel a threat from big government. And now this is really interesting because before when before Palantir went public, we, we knew that they had this kind of... Um, mysterious appeal they wouldn't share much of what they were doing we didn't really know who they're working with we knew maybe some spy agencies government agencies defense um 
but it wasn't clear. And now, as as Palantir started to get into the mainstream media, more coverage. Uh, Alex Carp has been in the news a bit more. We're seeing their filings. We're starting to look at you know investors are starting to dig a little deeper to see who are they working with, what are these contracts, what exactly are they doing. Now, naturally, you're going to get the good with the good and the bad with the bad because you're going to get people who are uh, campaigning against the kind of things that they do on an ethic and ethical and moral basis. And I think that's justified as well. I think every company should be held to a transparent rating um if you haven't watched that video go check it out um kathy wood uh new etf she's created a new etf around transparency where she only wants wants to take on companies who are transparent and uh you know without me looking at the numbers i don't think palantir are going to fall anywhere in the top 100 transparent companies in the world and transparency is not just about what data are you sharing it's about what do you what's the data security privacy laws what's your environmental effectiveness what's your hr and uh, well-being score you know it rates you on various different factors in your business and then gives you a transparency score based on your ethical and moral compass as a company so it's not just rewarding companies for doing good financially but doing good from a, a greater scheme and i think that's i think that's expected i think look naturally palantir the type of business they are if they want to turn into a more commercial business which is why they ipo'd they're trying to get more commercial contracts they need to move away from this sketchy communication around their defense and government partnerships and they need to be more transparent and if that's where they see that their future lies in terms of the business and commercial, then I think they need to make that active decision, even if it's at the risk of their defense contracts, it may sound irresponsible, but if, if they don't see the future in defense, which is why they're going after commercial, then why don't you go after commercial strongly, be transparent, be clear, explain to corporates why you're a good platform, why your AI and software is so powerful in terms of its data analytics and the insights it can give, instead of saying, oh, we're kind of this shady company that does some... Uh, does some corporate stuff, does some uh, defense stuff. I think that's the challenge here. Now, no doubt it's a great company. No doubt it has tremendous technology and the figures are looking decent. But these are the things that Palantir will have to improve on. So there you go, guys. There is an update on Palantir. The stock has seemed to shrug this off, obviously, given it's a UK vibe and it's not massive in terms of America. But nonetheless, it's a worrying sign because if it can happen here in the UK and the governments, for whatever reason, have been pressured enough to rescind their contract, there's no reason that can happen in other countries. And if you remember, when we looked at Palantir's earnings report, one of the key things we said we wanted to see was more diversification. We wanted to see more global diversification from Palantir, i.e. let them get more contracts in other countries outside of the States, but also from, from you know, mixing from governmental to commercial and we want to see that and this is not good because they've lost exactly that they lost a government contract in the uk which is exactly what we wanted them to pick up was more width in terms of geography and more depth in terms of commercial and uh, government and this is not going to be a good sign if a government's having to pull out like this commercial companies will also be wary of these kind of things if they're looking to take out a contract with palantir uh, maybe these things will be concerned. The last thing they want are a bunch of privacy campaigners knocking on Apple's door or Amazon's door or Square's door or PayPal's door if they're looking to work with a company like Palantir. So there you go, guys, an update on Palantir. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.